G'day guys, welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to be installing this indicator panel and showing you how to connect it into the Victron Fronia system. Here are the indicators I'm using. The blue light will come on when the batteries have reached 100% state of charge. The green light is a grid status indicator and the red light is the generator indicator. So there are some negatives about solar. It's more to do about how detrimental it is to human skin. So the reason I haven't posted any videos for a little while is I've been putting some treatment on my skin, on my face, to get rid of any uh, sunspots. It's like a chemotherapy cream and it attacks any cells that are rapidly multiplying. So I've been staying out of the sun and just taking it easy inside while that treatment's taking place and then I'll be able to get back into it. After 28 years of being a commercial industrial electrician, that sun has definitely taken a toll on my skin. So I've got to be very careful now, make sure I get my skin checked every year. The sun is very strong here in Australia. So make sure when you're working outside on the roof that you are fully covered up and wearing all your protection. I'll first use this small twist drill to start the holes, then move on to the step drill. This just helps get a precise location. Now enlarge those three holes to the 20 mil mark. And double check everything and move on from there. One more increment to go there, we're at 20 mil. Have a quick look. Not quite there. We'll take that to 22. Perfect. Take out the rest of them to 22. And then enlarge that hole in the cover plate only. I've got those three holes drilled through the cover plate and that base plate. Now I'll remove that cover plate and enlarge those holes so these can be screwed through that backing plate and then the cover plate can slide over the top of the indicator. I've got those two plates ready now. The head of the indicator fits through the cover plate and the body of the indicator fits through that backing plate. We'll put that together now.
go, perfect. Now that cover plate can come off. Slide over those lights. You can fix it to the wall after connecting the back. Put that cover plate straight back on. Everything lines up perfectly. I've hooked that panel up to this plug and flex just so I can do a little test. I've only connected the blue and the green. Got the blue light there, 100% state of charge, and the green light is the grid status. That should look pretty good. It's also going to act as a night light for the kids down the corridor there. While you're here, check out the rest of the channel. There's plenty of information about how I put the whole system together. Hit that bell icon if you'd like to be notified about any future episodes. Got the cables ready to go into the roof. It's a 1.5 twin and earth for the grid status. Then a 1.5 SDI for the generator status. And then another 1.5 SDI for the 100% standard charge relay. I'll run them in now. i use this snake to push through the gaps. And then the cable tie to the catenary wire that's up in the ceiling. This is going to be the location for the indicator panel next to the light switch in the hallway. I've removed that light switch from the wall. I'll drill a hole through the top plate and drop my drop chain down the wall that's going to be connected to the cables. Then I can pull that down and start terminating. This is the top plate of the wall above that light switch. I'll drill another hole next to that cable there. So it's got its own entry and start feeding them down. Now the holes drilled, I'll throw this drop chain down, tape the other end of the cables, and go and hook it out down the bottom and then pull the cables in. I've got the cables taped to the string. We'll drop that chain down the hole. And I'll go down the bottom and hook that out, pull the cables in. Take the hook now and fish that string out. Now I can pull the cables down the wall. Now we're ready to terminate. Marked out the hole to be cut there. We get the chip box saw now and cut that out. labelled all the cables, stripped off the ends and terminated them with the boot laces. Now they're ready to go into those indicators. I've got the neutral and earth to terminate on this side once I isolate that lighting circuit. Then these cables will need to be pulled into the switchboards down the other end and terminated. I'll get these fixed off into those indicators now. All the cables are terminated there. 
Got that 100% stator charge. Going to the blue light, the generator to the red, and the tariff to the green. The indicator panel is fixed to the wall now. Got all the lights off. So that means the tariff 33 is not live. The battery's not at 100% and we're not using the generator. It's quarter to nine in the morning. So the power entity has got the tariff switched off because we have peak loads in the morning when everyone's getting ready. Once that peak load drops down a bit, they'll switch that back on. If I ever need to switch the hot water servers over to the grid, if there's a few rainy days, to ensure we've got enough hot water for the family. I can use that indicator to tell when I can uh, access that power. The hot water service is only connected to the tariff. So I can switch that changeover switch once that green light is illuminated and I know my hot water system is going to heat up. I've opened up the remote console on my other phone. You can see the system running there. If we scroll across, you see the generator input. The generator is not started at the moment, but you can see the relay in operation. So we click on, and that relay turns on down on the multi plus. And then we've got the spar there. So if the battery's not at 100% and we want to have a spar at night time, we just hit that relay. There we go, the spar will turn on. So yeah, really happy with the result. Makes it nice and easy. I know what the system's doing without even touching my phone. Just for those few basic features. Thanks for watching another episode of Organic Power. Make sure you hit that like button down below. It will help spread that information to the rest of the community. Here's a little view of the system in operation today. This is the VRM portal. The battery's at float, 100%. We're consuming about $20 worth of power off the system every day which soon adds up, saving us quite a bit of money every year. So we're one year in, and things are going sweet. Stay tuned, there's more episodes to come. There's a few more upgrades to go on the system yet. So I'll be taking care of that very shortly. So take it easy guys, and we'll catch you in the next episode.